We've got a lot of people involved on this game. The last game on the card tonight, we've got Pittsburgh LA, 1920 on the rotation. Your late 10.05 Eastern, 7.05 p.m. Pacific time start. Pittsburgh LA, LA minus 130, minus 125 to minus 130 home favorite here. Uh, the total five and a half shaded to the under uh, in this hockey game tonight. Uh, Pittsburgh, a valiant effort to come back, make it interesting in the third period last night. Fell behind 4-1. Not one of the better performances from them defensively. Their penalty kill was not good. Tristan Jari, maybe not his best game in net either uh, for the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins last night. But, you know, they battled back in the third period, made it interesting, made it a good finish. But uh, too little, too late. Anaheim able to hang on and get the better of the Pittsburgh Penguins last night, 5-3, ending the Pittsburgh Penguins' four-game winning streak. And this is going to be a good, you know, test your metal kind of road trip here for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was on a nice little run, but a lot of that was at home. A lot of that was against teams that have been up and down. Now you're going on the road facing this California swatch of teams. Not going to be easy for this Pittsburgh team. And, you know, Alex B. Smith, is a he said it on multiple shows now, he thinks there's a real possibility Pittsburgh will not be in the postseason. I mean, he does not think uh, that this Pittsburgh team is that same team. They don't have that same spark. They don't have that same energy level. Uh, they don't have that same, maybe that desire is not there as much to win a cup anymore. Like satisfaction is set in and settled in with this Pittsburgh team. We've won two cups. We've been there, done that. Pfft, what's what's well, Why tire ourselves out and go through another rampant run through June, battle injuries left and right, nicks and bruises, bad knees, bad backs, bad necks. Uh, you know, wh why go through that again in that torture chamber one more time? That's the, no one's ever going to come out and say that publicly and obviously any sort of press conference or interview. But mentally, you're sort of thinking that we've put ourselves through the meat grinder two straight years and winning back to back Stanley Cups. What gas do we have left in our tank to put ourselves through that for a third straight season? Just the little things that, you know, you're a human being, you're not a machine. You know, you're not impenetrable. You're not made of Teflon. You know, you got one of those situations where, you know, you're, you're feeling tired. You played a lot of hockey two years in a row. Now going on a third year if you go uh, on another deep postseason run. And you just, maybe you're just worn out. Maybe mentally you're worn out a little bit. Physically, you're certainly worn out a little bit. Just wonder if that maybe is taking hold of this Pittsburgh Penguins team. And it's going to be something to monitor moving forward because their spot in the postseason is precarious right now. They're not guaranteed of anything at this point in time. They need to find a way to find their championship medal, their uh, championship level of play, whatever you want to call it, uh, and put it together for an extended stretch because this is a tough division they're in. The Metro division is insane how tough it is. The Eastern Conference, you know, there's teams in the Atlantic that are nipping at their heels as well for in terms of wild card positioning. So for the Pittsburgh Penguins, they can't fiddly fool around here. Uh, they're going to have to end up putting some wins on the board uh, and, and, and consistency, and that's something that they've had trouble doing. It. They finally showed a little glimpse of it, put four in a row together, but uh, that got snapped last night. Now they're on the second night of back-to-backs, uh, so that's a little bit of a tricky situation. Uh, and in terms of back-to-back -back spots, I think Pittsburgh's been one of the worst teams in the NHL in terms of back-to-back -back situations and how they've performed in, that, in those kind of spots. That's also a concern for me going into this game tonight against the uh, L.A. Kings. L.A., you know, off a bad loss to San. I don't know what it was. The early start wasn't good for them. I, I, what, what caused it? But that was a very, very lethargic L.A. King team the other night, or Monday afternoon, I should say, Martin Luther King Day uh, against San Jose, losing that game by a score of 4-1. to one. Uh, Just the, the, the thrust of offense was not there for the L.A. Kings. Like, generating scoring opportunities was not really something that they were uh, able to do in Bullshit Fools. It's like they were skating in quicksand uh, that entire hockey game. So that's definitely uh, a game that I think you would think the LA Kings be looking to bounce back from that. Haven't played well. There are four losses in a row, this LA team, and they've given up four goals in each of those losses to Calgary, Nashville, Anaheim, San Jose. So this is a team that's scuffling right now, you know? Uh, so for me, very, very tricky game. I do want to point out Pittsburgh uh, is on the season four and six their record on the second night of back-to-back -back games, which is the spot they're in here. Like I said, they have not been good for the most part. They were really horrible earlier in the season. Second night of back-to-backs, they've gotten a little bit better since then, but still not great. Uh, I don't really trust either team going into this game. So for me, it's a clear pass, but this is a popular game on the Ice Guys card because uh, we've got uh, Dana involved with it, uh, Andrew involved in it. Alex is not, Dana and Andrew both are. Let's go to Andrew. Penguins and Kings tonight. What are you looking at here from a betting standpoint? How's the audio sounding? Ah, so good so far. 
Can you make it for another two <laughs> minutes now? Go for it. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. Look, guys, I think uh, in this game in particular, I think that a back-to-back, second leg of a back-to-back, I'm completely fine with. You know, some people like to talk about stats with it, the uh, reports about how back-to-backs are on teams. Right now, I'm completely fine with it. One of the main reasons, guys, I want to go with the cliche here is because of the way they ended their game last night in Anaheim. That's always an important point, like logically, uh, for teams, for coaching staffs, going into their coaching meeting tonight, going into their coaching meeting this morning, how they're going to approach this game against the LA Kings. Uh, they've lost their last three games against the Kings, and, and uh, it's been a rather low-scoring game in those three games. And I think that uh, it's all about chemistry with this Pittsburgh Penguins team, and the more the chemistry develops, the better they play. You know, it's an obvious blanket statement for each team, but I think with the depth they have and how many line combinations that are really possible for this team, it's just all about developing that chemistry and, and almost being consistent with these lineups and let, letting these players have some time to play with each other uh, to kind of gain that chemistry and kind of uh, get to know how each other plays. So. I noticed yesterday, Dominic Simon, Crosby, Daniel Strong on that top line, you know, uh, they started mixing things up a little bit, throwing guys around. But I think, like I said, I think it's important that coaches battle through adversity, stick with those same guys on those lines, uh, and not mix things up and try and get them used to each other. I think try and develop that chemistry. And later on in the game, you did see everybody on those top two lines. You saw even the Hagelin, Malkin, and Hornquist line uh, start to do some magic as well uh, and get together. So. For me, looking at this game, I'm looking at the over, guys. I like the way that Pittsburgh finished that last game last night. Uh, I think that LA has been kind of on the short end of, of a couple games here. They're on a four-game losing streak. Uh, but let's look back to uh, January 2nd, even, against Edmonton. 5-0 win. Put up five goals there. January 4th against Calgary, 4-3 loss. January 6th, Nashville, 4-3 loss. And Anaheim, 4-3 loss. Of course, against San Jose on the 15th, 4-1 loss. So I think that uh, these two teams, the way that that uh, the way that LA actually looked to me in the first half, they actually looked to me that they're going to be an exciting team in the second half. I think they're taking more risks. They're taking more chances this year. Uh, a quick has been looking good, but I, I feel like there have been a, a lot more of an offensive this year. Before, they were relying on defensemen a lot to be the bulk of their team to kind of carry their load, to kind of help them out, bail them out back there. But like I said, uh, I would lean on Pittsburgh right now, but I just don't really know. It's kind of sketchy to me when when LA is going to kind of pop out of this uh, lose, get back to playing their game. So for me, I'm comfortable laying the over in this. I think LA will have be comfortable laying a couple of goals here. They'll throw up a couple for us. And I think that uh, Pittsburgh, by the way they ended their game last night, uh, I like the line combinations they're sticking with tonight. Uh, I believe they're going to be the same. And uh, that's why I'm comfortable laying the over with five and a half as an official play on the show, guys. All right, over five and a half. Pittsburgh's actually trended over the total. Now, Pittsburgh's one of those teams that, you know, we, everybody thinks of them as an over team. For a large part of the season, they really weren't, especially when their offense wasn't rolling. Their offense has been rolling lately, but they had a bad defensive game last night as well. They've cashed overs in three of their last four games. If you're looking at, you know, basically back-to-back uh, night trends, back-to-back game trends, Pittsburgh 7-2 and two to the over, second night of back-to-back games this season. So they've been an over team playing second night of back-to-backs, but uh, that remains to be seen. Will it can carry over to tonight here uh, in this game against uh, the uh, LA Kings? Uh, certainly they're going to be, I would think you'd want to clean up some things defensively. Uh, like I say, the uh, penalty kill, uh, the defensive game wasn't great by any stretch of the imagination uh, for uh, Pittsburgh. Not the greatest game either. Uh, in between the pipes either from Tristan Jari. Makes me think, and again, you're going to want to keep an eye on this Pittsburgh goaltending situation going into this game tonight. Maybe you see Casey DeSmith. You just might see him make the start for this Pittsburgh team. He's 2.53 goals against, 9.15 save percentage for the, uh, uh, I guess, the baby pens, as you can call them, down in Wilkes-Barre Scranton uh, this season. So we'll see if he gets the call tonight in that Casey DeSmith for Pittsburgh. I think Tristan Jari needs a rest. He looks a little looked a little worn out last night. Uh, give him a rest at second night of back-to-back games. I think you might, not for sure. It's obviously Mike Sullivan's call in the end. It's not Ian Cameron's call, but I think you got a chance to see uh, Casey DeSmith uh, in that tonight for Pittsburgh. And Dana Lane also has a play on the Peng- Penguins and Kings tonight. Dana, uh, what are you looking at in this game tonight? Guys, we're getting plus money with the Pittsburgh Penguins. 
I mean, I, I listen, I understand that they've had their struggles this year, but we've also seen in past years where they've had struggles up until January and all of a sudden just turn turn the light switch on. I understand they're not they haven't been in a situation where they're coming off of two cup wins. And your point is valid, even Ian. But fortunately for us tonight, we're only looking at a one game scenario when we're making our making our our plays. And yes, this is a back to back situation, but what's, let's really look at this back to back situation. Okay, so you played in Anaheim last night. You're either going to stay in Anaheim or you're going to LA, which is a 45 minute drive. These guys were in yeah. bed by, you know, 11:30 last night. Full night's sleep. They should be 100% and ready to go um, in anticipation of tonight's game. I thought Pittsburgh was a little sloppy last night, which I um, anticipated for the, the first game of a road trip, I thought Latang and Dumoulin struggle most of the night. I don't think they get a lot of pucks to the net, which they don't from their blue line. That's not really their game, but I'd love to see those two guys get more than two shots in 40 minutes. Um, I thought they forechecked really well, especially uh, ha- uh, uh, Haglin on the on the Malkin goal, goal. So I did see some good things. Let's not also forget that you're dealing with the best power play unit in the league, and it proved it again last night with two goals and four opportunities against the Ducks. Uh, of course, that almost um, get handed the game back to Pittsburgh. Uh, their power play, not only is it fantastic overall, but it's number one in the league on the road as well. Um, and speaking of, of, of Haglin, I, I think that he really is the key to getting that second line to second line refocus. Um, if he can get that line with, with Malkin and Hornquist rolling and he can contribute. And I, I don't think that, I don't mean to say that they're not focused, but I think you need some contributions uh, from Haglin. I think that that second line is going to be absolutely lethal. Uh, he's played much better uh, as of late for sure. Uh, and that's really given uh, Pittsburgh quite a boost. I mean, let's face it. He's had probably uh, his most quiet season in a long time, but you know, if he can start to come alive, like he's done in the past, I mean, that really just makes that second line uh, even stronger. And, 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 you know, I, I think that they're playing a little bit better defensively. I mean, this is not a team that obviously they were up and down run and gun style hockey team. So you're not, you're not, you can't take too much away from the shots on goal statistic. Even last night, both teams were tied at 33 with shots and you just, unless it gets into the 40 range for Pittsburgh, which they don't really want because their style of hockey is going to allow opposing teams to, to get a ton of shots on goal. And, and that was even, even going back to, um, you know, the Stanley cup years of, of two years ago, or two years ago and the, and the, uh, year that they beat San Jose, um, they gave up a ton, ton of shots that year and they gave up a ton of shots, uh, the previous or last season, uh, in route to winning the cup. So that's not a big deal to me as well. Um, I think they, they do have three, still have three lines that are completely lethal. I don't know if the uh, LA Kings can match that right now. I, I get a little bit worried when, you know, everybody's anticipating Kyle Clifford coming back and adding offense. I, I don't really know where that theory has come. I heard that yesterday. I mean, this is a guy that has never seen double digits and goals in the, in the league at all. So I'm not sure where the, where we're leading on Kyle Clifford to, pe- to, to pick up the, uh, pick up the slack, but um, I don't know why you don't put Clifford on that checking line and, and put you know Gabrick on the third line. I think you get more out of Gabrick. But uh, anyway, so uh, in in closing, I like the Penguins getting the getting the plus money tonight against the Kings. Yeah, I hope it works out better for you, Dana, than it did for me last night. I said Pittsburgh plus money. How can I not take it? And of course, they lose five three to Anaheim. But so that's exactly why I'm staying away. I've, I've had enough now with this Pittsburgh team. Gave them a shot. Now watch them win tonight. So you're probably in good shape. Pittsburgh uh, plus uh, 105. Or Dana here. Plus 110 actually. You can get better than that. Plus 110s out there uh, on the Pittsburgh side. I don't trust either team right now. But uh, Penguins would be the side for Dana in this game. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to our channel. Now we've put a lot of work into producing all these free videos. So please help us out and keep all our content free for you forever by simply liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Now, not to mention a visit to our industry leading website will warm the hearts of all our SBR employees, especially myself. Now the links are over there to the left. uh, So do check those out. Thanks for watching.